What is the secret sauce behind a well-oiled GPU cloud machine? Is it the amount of memory? The inference speed? Or something else? Renting GPU time is expensive. You have to pay an hourly rate for a pod whether you use it or not. But what if it didn't have to be that way? What if you could just pay for the time you actually wanted to use? Just minutes, or even seconds. What if you wanted to just run a local image gen Python script and have it send a request to a RunPod Cloud GPU, have it do what you ask, and just drop the image right in your local drive for just a few cents of GPU spend? What if you wanted to fire off a request to an endpoint to do sentiment analysis in response to a social media post someone made as soon as it occurred, without simply just renting a GPU 24 hours a day? Then you're going to love what I'm going to talk about next. This is Serverless Made Simple. RumPod Serverless is a flexible GPU computing service specifically designed for AI inference, training, and general compute tasks. It allows you to pay for GPU computing power by the second, rather than paying for dedicated hardware whether you're using it or not. Think of it like this. Traditional pod rental is like leasing an entire restaurant 24 hours a day, even when there are no customers. Serverless is like having a kitchen that exists only when customers place orders and disappears when they're done eating. You only pay for the actual cooking time. With RunPod Serverless, your workloads can seamlessly scale from zero to hundreds of workers across several globally distributed regions. The system automatically handles all operational aspects of your infrastructure from deployment to scaling, so you can focus on your models rather than managing hardware. A pod is a Swiss army knife of AI tools. Although RunPod has hundreds of templates, the truth is they are just starting points meant to cut down on your deploy time. You can install anything extra on any pod that you start up. Every pod you start up involves booting up an interactive container, a terminal, and an entire operating system, and that takes time every time you do it. On the other hand, serverless endpoints do one thing that you tell them to, and they do it well. You provide the code, the endpoint executes, returns the results, and shuts down. In and out, 20 second adventure. If a pod is a multi-tool that can accomplish anything, then a serverless endpoint is like a heat sinking missile. Fire and forget. So to wit, there's a bit more technical lifting to do with serverless, but hang tight, we'll get through it. An endpoint consists of a URL that accepts requests and some configuration options. If your endpoint isn't accomplishing any work, it costs you absolutely nothing to keep open. Endpoints maintain and delegate the list of open requests that you have and part them out to run pods GPUs, depending on the resources that you've assigned to it. A worker consists of the GPUs that are assigned to do your task. These are doled out based on the variables that you've set up, and this is what you get billed for. Active workers, as the name suggests, stay active and ready to accept new requests, and you will be billed for the entire time those workers are running, whether they are actively accomplishing a task or not. However, they are also discounted compared to our next worker type. So you can use these workers for your baseline level of demand to get the most efficient use out of your spend. Flex workers spin up in response to the demand. When your active workers are all occupied, then you can have the endpoint automatically spawn additional flex workers to handle new tasks to ensure those tasks are completed in a timely manner. Finally, the handler function is a code that you want a worker to run. This can either be packaged in a Docker image on your own, or you can simply leave it on GitHub and pull it into an endpoint through GitHub integration and have it automatically build the image that way. There's a bit more to the handler function, but we'll get into that in the following video. So now that I've just talked about how awesome serverless is, the question you might be thinking of is, well, when would you not want to use it? The short answer is any time that your workload is intensive and predictable. That is when you will want to use a pod instead. A prime example is training a model. You know the GPU will be running at full blast for hours or even days. So there's no sense in paying the premium for serverless time that automatically scales. 
Serverless is more expensive per second of GPU time, but saves you money through a far more efficient application of that time. So if you have a task that you know is going to take long periods of contiguous GPU usage, that is a prime application to use a pod instead. In the following videos, we'll do some deep dives into how to configure and set up your own endpoint, code and all. But that is for another time. If you'd like to read ahead, I've linked to our blog with some examples of functioning code, code that will dissect piece by piece. But if you just can't wait, you're free to run it now. We've covered what makes RunPod serverless a revolutionary approach to GPU cloud computing. From its on-demand pricing model to its key components and ideal use cases. The question isn't whether serverless or traditional pods are better. It's about choosing the right tool for your specific workload. For your next project, it might be worth considering. After all, why pay for hardware that's its idle when you can just pay for computation? Until next time, be well.